Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me here. Um, I'm Tong Yima. I'm, uh, um, I was uh, uh, the CEO and co-founder of OHAI. We just recently got acquired by MongoDB. I'm also teaching at Stanford as well. So um, this is about RAG, which is uh, the main focus of OHAI, uh, the startup who is focusing on how to make retrieval better. So, um, um, but I will just generally talk about you know, RAG and, uh, and we'll touch on some of the products we make as well very quickly. So I guess uh, why we are uh, doing RAG or anything like that, right? So I guess the main reason is that large language model are these days agent, uh, which are you know, using large language models as well. Uh, if they're out of the box, they cannot just uh, uh, have uh, uh, priority information from any of the companies, right? Because if they know anything about what MongoDB, for example, internally has, then the, the data was leaked. So that means that if you want to apply any of this to enterprise, uh, uh, then um, uh, you need to ingest a lot of data from the uh, property information. So, um, and uh, I'm gonna discuss, you know, why, uh, which kind of technologies to, to enable us to ingest the data. I guess there are uh, a few options, RAG, fine tuning, and long contacts, which are all ways to ingest data, and I'll focus on RAG for the rest of the talk. So I guess you know, for this audience, probably most people know these technologies, and they are all very simple uh, on a uh, high level. So for long context, it's just the, the most simple. You just uh, dump all your documents uh, uh, to uh, a large language model's context, and uh, maybe it's like one million tokens, maybe it's one billion tokens. Um, so, and then you have a query, and you just uh, get a response. Uh, fine tuning is like you first fine tune a large language model, you update the parameters, and then you say, I'm not going to look at the documents anymore. Uh, when the query comes, I just use the updated parameters to generate response. Uh, and RAG is uh, um, also pretty simple. So basically what happens is that on the fly, you use the query to retrieve some subset of the documents. You use a retrieval or search method. Uh, um, and then you get some relevant documents. You give this small set of relevant documents to the large language model, and then you generate response based on those contexts. So this is one my one slide kind of like a, uh, summary of you know how I think about the differences between these technologies. You know some of the these are uh, uh, inspired by some of the research at Stanford when we kind of started to uh, uh, um, uh, uh, build Voyage. You know we kind of like believe in RAG, and one of the reasons is that we don't believe that fine tuning can work. And and long contacts, I think, um, uh, I also don't really uh, believe that it can be cost efficient in the long run. So so basically, I think the way that I think about this is that um, I. Uh, try to make analogy to how humans uh, are uh, learning from or using the additional property information. Um, um, so in some sense, long context is kind of like you scheme an entire library to answer any single question. Right? Every time you answer a question, you, you need to go through the entire library, which has like probably one billion tokens. And fine tuning is kind of like you read this library in, your, in advance. You muscle memorize them. You try to internalize them in your brain, in your neurons, in your synapses, and you update your brain, basically rewire your brain so that you really know all of those deeply. Um, the challenge there is that you know, it's very difficult and um, somewhat unnecessary um, um, because you, know, you cannot really memorize all the books in, your, in, in, the, in the world, and, uh, and, uh, and memorizing a subset of them sometimes is kind of like you know, which subset you want to memorize is kind of uh, tricky as well. So, and another thing is that um, um, it makes you know, forgetting the knowledge also tricky because you don't know which part of the knowledge you should forget and how to cleanly forget all of them. And also this makes the, the access, the, the, the data governance also kind of tricky because you know, uh, maybe there are so many libraries, so many books in the library and not everyone can access everything and uh, how to organize those. And on the other hand, RAG is very, very simple and modularized. Uh, as I've shown, so um, and very reliable and, and you know and, and also kind of fast and, and cheap. So um, and it's kind of like similar to how humans actually are using the libraries, right? You retrieve the most relevant you know book chapters or books or book chapters and then answer the question. It's kind of a hierarchical way to store your information, right? You don't really put all of the information in your brain. You put them in a library and then use them uh, when you need it. So. Um, that's why I believe in RAG, and, uh, and this is kind of how you implement the retrieval part. So basically, there is a breakdown of two components. Actually, there are three you know, if you are advanced. So, uh, so this uh, embedding models, which vectorize the, the documents and query uh, into vectors, and the vectors are representations of the, uh, this kind of, like, representations of the content or the meanings of uh, the documents and queries, and then use the vector database to store the data and also search uh, uh, with a k nearest neighbor search in the vector space. And then you get the relevant documents, and then you can use large language model to generate answers. 
So um, we have seen significant improvements over the retrieval accuracy in the last uh, two years. Um, when we started Voyage, you know, I think uh, uh, OpenAI v3 was not uh, yet launched. I think OpenAI v3 was launched 1.5 years ago. Um, and in the last 1.5 years, you know, Voyage you know, uh, uh, has made significant progress. You know, Cohere also made some progress. So uh, we can see that the new model has much better uh, accuracy and with lower cost. Uh, um, and uh, uh, generally, we have much better scaling law, right? So the same number of parameters, the, the quality becomes better, or the same quality, the, 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 the parameters become smaller, and it becomes cheaper. Um, and all of these are through kind of like, uh, you know, optimizing the research stack, uh, the training stack, you know, as much as possible, you know, all the way from like data curation, data selection, uh, 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 architecture, loss functions, you know, evaluation, so on and so forth. Uh, and we still, you know, believe that there's a big headroom here because, you know, right now you can see that in this plot, you know, we are averaging over about 100 data sets and the accuracy is about 80%. So that means that you still have like probably 20% of the improvement um, uh, headroom. But that said, you know, just to be clear, uh, it's not like for every data set you only have 80% accuracy. For probably half of the data sets, the accuracy is probably 90% or even 95%. And for some of the other ones, it's kind of 60, sometimes 20, sometimes 30. So that's why in average it's 80%. Um, so, for, so basically, I'm saying like for some of the tasks that are common, uh, I think you can get already very high accuracy in the retrieval step. Um, and another thing that uh, uh, Voyage and other uh, 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 companies has uh, uh, offered is this uh, so-called matricial learning and also quantization wire training. So basically, these are two approaches to reduce the the storage cost uh, for the vectors. So basically, matricial learning means that you uh, make sure that uh, even you have like a, a high dimensional uh, embedding, right? You can use a subset of the uh, the coordinates. Uh, it's, it's usually the first. Uh, let's say suppose you have a 248 dimensional vectors, and the first uh, 256 dimensional uh, sub uh, vector is still a reasonable embedding. The accuracy wouldn't be as high as. To uh, 2048, but it will be almost the same, uh, maybe with like one or two percent loss. And quantization is kind of the, in a similar vein. So where you are, uh, even you lower your precision of the vectors, you still get pretty high performance. Uh, and you can see the uh, the trade-off on the right of the figure uh, here. So basically, you can save you know 100x, you know at least 10x without losing much. If you save 100x in the storage cost, then you start to lose probably five to 10 percent. Um, but Voyage, you know, is doing a great job here because, you know, you can save uh, 100x but still doing better than OpenAI. That's just because the parental frontier is uh, different. So, um, um, and, and you can actually see better trade-off, you know, for domain-specific models, which I, I'm going to discuss in a moment. Um, I have nine minutes here, so I will probably just quickly go through some of the, uh, uh, the techniques that you can use. Um, so basically, the next question is that how do you do better RAG, you know, with the, besides using better embedding models. Using better embedding models is probably one of the simplest way. Um, so I'm just gonna go through it quickly. So one of them is to use hybrid search and re-rankers. You can use you know, lexical search and other kind of search and then combine them with a re-ranker. Uh, and Voice provides a, a re-ranker as well. Um, and uh, another one is you can enhance the queries and documents by the so-called query decomposition and, and document enrichment. Um, so this is probably the most common one. Maybe let's maybe spend one minute on it. So it's actually very simple. You just say, if you have a query rag, then you try to improve the query by uh, making it longer using a large language model. Uh, you can also decompose the longer query into small sub-queries so that you can have like, a few different queries and search for different subset of documents. Um, and you can also enrich the document by adding additional meta information in it. You can add titles, you know, headers, you know, categories, authors, dates. Sometimes you trunk the document so that in the trunk you don't even have this information anymore. So that's why you have to add the global information into each of the trunks. And some of this global information can be added by large language models. Anthropic wrote a blog post which does achieve pretty good results. So basically they use large language models to generate additional context um, that you can add to the trunks so that you can make the trunks you know, more uh, informative and then the, the, it's easier to search uh, through them. So um, another one is you can use domain specific embeddings where um, you um, you customize embeddings for certain kind of domains. You know, in uh, MongoDB or Voyage, we customize it for code, for example, and you can see that you know you get much better performance, and also uh, it's a better trade-off in terms of the the storage cost and uh, um, uh, and and the accuracy. So basically, you don't lose as much if you compress the vectors even further. Um, so so here we lose probably five percent by compressing uh, for like a 
about 100x, um, but before we lose probably 10% or 15%. Um, fine tuning is another one. You can fine tune the embedding models with your own data, um, and you can also use other. Um, sometimes I call them tricks uh, on, on top of the embeddings, right? So these are different type, type of ways to retrieve um, uh, using additional information like graph, you know, iterative retrieval, so on and so forth. They are all based on embeddings, um, but uh, you can uh, use the embeddings in many different ways uh, uh, as an additional layer. Um, so um, I guess I'll use the next uh, probably five minutes to discuss some of the uh, and uh, uh, my vision for how RAG will go in the future, I do believe that RAG will be there forever because this is, as I argued in the first slides, uh, the first set of slides, this is the kind of like very similar to how humans are uh, using uh, additional large amount of data. You retrieve, you hierarchically select some subset, and then you use those uh, to, uh, uh, to, to answer the questions uh, or, or, or take some actions. And this is very efficient because you only use a small subset of the data. Um, and uh, um, and as a, uh, uh, um, uh, regarding uh, how, um, how REG will evolve in t from a technical point of view, uh, I'd like to draw some analogy uh, um, uh, uh, from uh, how the, the AI generally is evolving. So I think I was reflecting on when I was teaching at Stanford, you know, started to teach at Stanford about seven years ago. Uh, I started to teach with Chris Ray on uh, this machine learning course. And uh, one of the slides literally have these seven steps on how do we build ML systems in enterprises. Um, so this actually, this slide is still in the, the lecture notes. Uh, we still teach them, but just with more kind of like uh, uh, asterisks uh, around it. So you can see like you, you need to go through, you know, many steps, you know, collecting data, you know, train test split, you know, define your loss functions, you know, build models and, and iterate and repeat. And then uh, for the large language model world, it's kind of like this, right? You don't need to do any of this. You just take a large language model out of the box and just, uh, you know, you can deploy it in enterprise in most of the cases. Of course, it's not going to be perfect, but this is already better than in the old days, you do all of these steps in the enterprise using all the enterprise data. Just out of the box, you are doing already very, very well. Of course, you still have this issue that you cannot, the out of the box large language model cannot um, uh, access property information, then you can use RAG uh, for it. So, but I think the point here is that before, uh, all of these steps have to be done by the kind of like the users or the enterprise or the customers in some sense. Um, uh, and now, uh, you largely speaking, just can take off the shelf components and connect them and build your uh, AI applications very fast without going through these training steps. The trainings still have to be done. Right? All of these steps still are done, uh, um, but they are done by Open Anthropic or Voyage, MongoDB, uh, the providers of the models, but not the, uh, uh, the, the users, um, uh, the end users. So, um, and I think for RAG, I, I would say probably the same kind of evolution should happen. Um, 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 so right now what happens is that uh, we have the several different layers where we have the computing infrastructure layer about the GPUs, you know, uh, or some of the KNs on the CPUs. And there's also a model layer where uh, you have the embedding models, the re-rankers, the large language models. And then on top of all of this, um, people use a lot of like, I call it tricks to make rec, uh, uh, accuracy much better, right? You can uh, uh, use all kind of parsing strategies. You can use all kind of trunking strategies. You know, uh, uh, the, 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 um, um, you can do some recursive search. You can do some contextual trunks, graph rec, so on and so forth, right? That's what happens right now. And it's kind of necessary. These tricks are somewhat necessary because the embeddings and re rankers and large language models, none of them are perfect yet. Right, so, um, and, but I do believe that in the future, I think this model layer will grow uh, uh, and the tricks will be smaller. So it's gonna be fewer and fewer tricks and the models can capture many of the, uh, the, the performance gain uh, by the tricks. I think we have seen this in the large language model space as well, right? So like uh, um, two years ago, I think you need to do a lot of things on top of the GPT-3 to make your application work. And now, even after, uh, uh, out of the box, you can get the same performance as before with all of the tricks. Um, of, of course, you still probably need some kind of tricks because some information are not, uh, 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 some information um, the embedding models and rankers don't have just, right? So the, the, the general purpose models or off the shelf models don't have certain information and then you can incorporate those uh, into your tricks. For example, one thing that uh, uh, is that, you know, the definition of the similarity matrix uh, uh, could be something that you should customize in your prompt. And um, in this one, you know, um, I think 
Uh, there are several things that we are developing towards this vision, right? So one of them is uh, multi-model embedding. This is to dramatically simplify the workflow so that you don't have to do many things, right? So these days, the multi-model embedding provided by Voyage can just take in screenshots, right? Before you take a PDF, you have to do the data extraction to turn them into image and text, and then probably do some embeddings for the image and embedding for the text separately. Um, and, and, and parsing this PDF is actually complex. You know, and for videos, you have to do, turn them into transcript um, um, and then use the text embedding, so on and so forth. Right, right, now, uh, right now, we have the multi-model embedding, which just takes in screenshot. You can deal with PT, PT, PDF, you know, PPT, uh, uh, PowerPoint, PowerPoint you know, any of the other kind of slice deck in the same way. Just take a screenshot and then use the multi-model embedding. We don't have the, uh, we can even do the uh, same thing for video, uh, not necessarily the perfect way, but like uh, you just take screenshots of the frames, you know, consecutive frames, and you give it to the uh, multi-model embedding, and you can uh, turn them into vectors, and you can search over uh, on those documents or, or videos or slide stack. So, um, and these are some performance metrics that we have uh, evaluated, you know, we have try kind of like, oh, by the way, another one application is tables, right? Now you can just take a screenshot of the tables. You don't have to think too much about what is the header, what is the row, so on and so forth. And we have done evaluations on many of these document screenshots, you know, table figures, and, uh, and also text only. And you can see that it's uh, improving across the board. So um, the, the final one I would like to mention, which is something that we're going to launch uh, soon, is that this context where and auto trunking embedding. So, uh, right now, what happens is that when you have a long document, you do have to trunk the data. Um, uh, one of the reasons is that the, co the context uh, length of the embeddings is limited. You know, if you have like 100k tokens, you do have to trunk it into three or four trunks. You know, even though Voyage AI has the probably, I think it, we have the longest context window, is still like 32k. So that's one reason to trunk. And another reason to trunk is that sometimes it's a long, the long document, even you don't trunk. Suppose you can have a way to uh, uh, put all of them in a context window. Still, when you retrieve, you're going to retrieve on a document level, then you retrieve a very, very long document. And then you should give this long document to large language model. It's going to be very, very expensive. right? If you give 100K uh, tokens to large language model, every time you answer any question, if you do some cost analysis, you'll find that that core is very, very expensive. So that's why you do have to work on a smaller unit so that you can cut the cost and, and be also more focused, right? So sometimes you give a long document to a large language model, it misses some of, some of the contents in the middle, and you have to use the retrieval to focus on a paragraph, a page, so on and so forth. So, so that's what happens right now with the trunking. And, uh, but all of these are done by the users. Uh, and our vision is that we're going to do this for you, and also we're going to uh, get all the meta information about, from other trunks. So basically, um, uh, in a nutshell, the, 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 the interface will be that you give us a long document, and we're going to trunk it for you. And then also, we return the trunks and also the vectors for each of the trunk. And each of these vectors is not only representing that trunk, but also representing some of the global uh, uh, meta information from other trunks. So it has all the details uh, of the corresponding trunk, and also has some kind of like a cross grid information from other trunks, so they can get the best of the both worlds. Um, and uh, that's what I'm going to launch you know, soon. And another one is that we're going to have some fine-tuning API at some point uh, to make you, uh, 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 so that you can fine-tune uh, with your own data. Um, I guess uh, it's exactly time. Thanks very much. <laughs>